young teenager, just starting life really. I played sport, used to go to the gym, and life I thought was great. And then all of a sudden one day, I was driving in Newcastle, um, stopped at a pedestrian crossing, and then next thing I knew somebody ran up the back of me. days I started to experience pain. Initially it started in my neck, down into my shoulders, and as time moved on it, it went basically the whole length of my body. Life was um, not what it was. I couldn't do anything. I was this active person and all of a sudden I was completely disabled by my pain. I couldn't go and play sport anymore. I couldn't play netball that I loved playing. I wasn't able to work, um, although I did continue to work. I worked with a lot of pain. I'd go home at night and I'd lay on the floor and cry because I was in so much pain. I was told that I would never have children that um, I'd probably never exercise again, I'd never play sport. So for me, there was no hope. I found myself on the, um, I suppose what you could call it was the compensation merry-go-round. Seeing doctors trying to get answers um, where no doctors gave answers. I was having physiotherapy um, and that wasn't working. I was referred to psychologists who wanted to medicate me, which I wasn't really very happy with, but they, in the end, put a lot of pressure on me to take the medication to help my pain, and I did. Um, and that, I think, made things go worse. They thought I was depressed. They labelled me with depression, I suppose, and I never thought I was depressed. I was just living with pain. I was dealing with an insurer that didn't seem to want to help. All they wanted to do was get me out of their books, basically, I suppose you could say. And um, every time I called them to try and get help or try to ask them if they could give me answers, they were, they were terrible. They were actually screaming at me over the phone and told me um, that if it was money that I wanted, then that we can settle right now. Now that really made me upset and cranky because I didn't want money. I wanted my life back. Eventually, one day, I was um, referred to another, yet another rehab provider. For two hours she cried, for two hours I stood with her, she rocked against the back of the chair. I knew that she didn't know how to take me because I was not doing the normal rehabby things. We were really just getting to know each other. I was very wary because I'd been through this so many times and told my story and basically made to feel like a fraud. Little by little, bits and pieces of explaining pain came out. Um, I asked her to go away and think about it all and whether she wanted to engage with this program because it's my view that even in a compensation system you should have the uh, final right as a person in that system to say yes I do want to work with this person or no I don't. It was amazing to find somebody that actually cared, that didn't look at you as a number or somebody that who was trying to beat the system or be fraudulent. They actually realised that you were in pain and that what you were saying was true. I started to realise that there was somebody out there that could help, that there was hope, and that maybe there was answers to help me. <laughs> After a while, Kimberly went back into the gym with our exercise physiologist. We'd been explaining pain the whole time. I was really, really scared and I didn't um, think that I could do it. 
because I hadn't been able to do anything for so long. The best I could really do was sit and that even hurt. So to start doing these sort of exercises was very traumatic, but I did it because I knew that I had to get better and something had to work sometime. Kimberly was now understanding that there is a real message when you're frightened, when you're angry, when you're distressed, when you're frustrated. These are the adrenaline emotions and these are the ones that fire up pain. So she was very good at being able to identify when she was having those moments. And we were having an ongoing conversation about these sorts of um, emotions and she got it. During the time of trying to do these exercises, I'd cry and not do a lot at first because I didn't believe that I could do them. So I would cry and just look at people and think, I'm never gonna be able to do that. That's just not gonna be possible. As I began to be able to do things again, I, I did, I felt good. Life did have hope and I felt that um, maybe one day I could get back to the person that I was and achieve again. I tentatively put my foot onto the treadmill. My whole body was stiff and I was scared and I slowly started to walk. I only did a minute initially, but it was enough to make me have a little bit of hope that maybe I could do this one day. Over time, weeks and months, I built up my tolerance of time and speed. So the speed slowly started to increase as I found that my tolerance has increased. So one day she had finished her program and she was still improving, she still knew what she had to do and she was doing a little bit more work, a little bit more this, a little bit more that. Walking along and I'm just listening and, and there's a big puddle and Kimberly's in mid-flight, you know, yak, yak, yak. And she jumps over this puddle. And I just notice it because this is a girl that is not able to do aerobics yet because she's frightened of jumping, you see, and she's just jumped over this puddle. I couldn't believe it. It was surreal really because I hadn't been able to do anything like that and I don't think that my mind had caught up with my body. My body was actually now able to do things that I was too scared of doing and that um, my mind was saying you can't do but yet I did it. I was running and I couldn't believe it. I was actually running again and that moment was overwhelming. It was unbelievable to think that I was back to where I, I was. Despite all of the doom and gloom that she'd experienced in the couple of years before she met us and we, we started working with her, uh, she went ahead, went, went on to have two babies, despite the medical advice that she wouldn't have babies. And she's living a perfectly normal, wonderful life. That girl won prizes when she went back to netball. She went back to full-time gym. I never ever thought it would be possible. <laughs>